What's going on YouTube? I just wanted to make a super quick tutorial to show you how to use the forecast sheet in Excel. So basically the forecast sheet is a feature in Excel that is new um, as of Excel 2016 that makes it to where you can actually use historical data to predict what the data will be in the future with a given confidence interval. Um, a couple things to keep in mind before you get into this. So for one thing, you want to have a, a two things at a minimum, a range of dates that are, de that are ideally chronological and you want to have a set of data. And please note that whenever you're using the forecast sheet, um, it defaults to forecasting the rightmost column, which it does not issue as we only have two columns in this in this table, but it going forward, um, it may be important to keep in mind if you have when to forecast a different column. And so for example, we have Apple, his five year historical, historical prices for five years of Apple stock. Um, and the reason these numbers are fairly small because it is after a relatively recent stock split. But with that being said, um, I, I got yeah, I use weekly prices from Yahoo Finance and Excel as opposed to daily, for example, just because there's consistency in, in the difference between like the, the dates. So to use this feature, all I have to do is hide the data and then go to data forecast sheet. And then here you it gives you a sample of what the forecast sheet will look like where you have various options to change what the forecast sheet will look like. So for example, you can forecast, as you can see, defaults to forecasting out to February 25th, 2022. You can change to 2025, for example. As you can see, it gives you numbers for 2025. You can change the confidence level, the confidence interval. So 10% confidence interval, super tight, 95% more loose or you can also have that on or off. You can see if it will detect the season the seasonality um, automatically, or you can have uh, change that yourself. You can uh, this is something that a feature that I think is really cool is that you can have forecast statistics, which I will um, show after it's created. And then also you also if you want to change the value that's forecasted. So for example, if you have three columns as opposed to just two, and then when we want to forecast in the middle, you you use this box right here to change that. And sometimes you might have like missing data points um, in, in the data. So for you can use either interpolation, which is where Excel kind of guesses what the data will be, or you can use zeros. So the data is filled in with zeros. Um, just use that cautiously with your data. Next, um, aggregate du duplicates using. So this is basically it, what it does with the um, duplicate numbers. And in and, and the various options, you can average, count, max, median, min, sum. Um, is to see what Excel will do with the duplicate values. There aren't any missing data or duplicate values in this data set, so this is not very, very um, applicable, but there are different options that you can use if there is duplicate or missing data. So I'm just going to select create. And here you can see there is a option for, there is a forecast for what the price of Apple stock will be from now, which is November of 2020 into the future, out until February of 2025. One of the things that I personally think is really cool with this is it gives you a various um, array of statistics that you can find to be useful. But one of the, so for example, one of the things that I personally think is really useful is it gives you the numbers for the forecast for the lower bounds and the upper bounds of the confidence interval. Um, so as you can see, as you can see here is here is the date of Friday, but that because today Sunday has the last published price, and here you can see actually gives, it gives you the actual numbers for the forecasted prices. So, so for example, you can highlight this and create and create your own graph with just a conference interval. So if you want to zoom on that a little bit more. So for example, you have like various statistics pertaining to like the, the mean absolute error, um, for example, that will help you get a better understanding of the numbers that you are um, looking at. So with that being said, there are some things to keep in mind. So for one thing, this is useful for like a quick and dirty look as to your numbers. Um, and it can be, and it creates a cool visualization, which is great for presentations. Um, with that being said, take this with a grain of salt, in my opinion, because it looks at historical values and this is forward looking numbers. So, so that being said, back, that being said, historical numbers are only so useful looking to the future. Um, and definitely use this at your own risk. In my opinion, it's a cool feature in Excel and it's something to look at, but definitely, um, 
definitely use your own assumptions when looking at the numbers. So with that being said, I really hope that you found this feature of Excel to be really cool. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Any support that I can get is something that's extremely valuable. Let me know if you have any feedback, questions, comments, or concerns. Um, and hope you all have a great day. Thank you.